Hi guys, today I'm going to do a quick uh, oil change for my car. It's a 2011 Honda Accord with a 2.4 liter motor or a 4 cylinder motor. I bought the parts at my local Honda dealership for my oil change. That includes 5 quarts of motor oil and an oil filter along with the washer for the drain plug or the crush washer for the drain plug. Uh, I need 5 quarts because the oil capacity for the 2.4 liter motor on the Honda Accord K series is 4.4 quarts or 4.2 liters with <coughs> sorry about that for me I bought the uh, oh and for everything in total at my uh, local dealership it came to just a little over 50 bucks and so and that's because I went with the full synthetic as a part to the synthetic blend, which I'll explain a little bit later. They offer those two different uh, options um, for your car. I went, for me, I went with the full synthetic because it lasts longer. It's a better value to me. The full synthetic cost uh, 860, whereas the uh, synthetic blend cost 585. Would have cost 585. So for me, the better value was the full synthetic because the full synthetic can go as high as um, 12,000 to 15,000 uh, oil change intervals whereas the synthetic blend or I don't know that so whereas whereas the synthetic blend will go up to probably 7,000 miles but it's recommended to change it every 5,000 miles it can go a little bit uh, longer than your conventional uh, oil which goes every 3,000 to 5,000 miles so 5,000 is usually the top limit but every 5,000 miles for a partial blend because for the uh, synthetic blend it has I believe 14% uh, uh, synthetic 14% uh, syn of a synthetic blend in it and the rest is just conventional oil conventional oil and additives so 5,000 miles you can go maybe like I said before as high as 7,000 but I wouldn't push anything past $5,000 uh, if it was uh, 5,000 miles, sorry about that, if it was my car. <clears throat> so for me, the full synthetic was a better uh, deal. It can last longer. It was just $3 more per quart. It, it's like I said, it lasts longer, so I don't have to do a constant uh, oil change every uh, every either couple months. I could probably go as long as a year, maybe a year and a half, depending on your driving. Um, of course, if you're doing a lot of city driving, you'd want to change a lot more often. Highway driving is a little bit easier on your motor, so you can probably extend it a little bit longer. Although you're going to reach the mile change interval that is um, that Honda recommends, or any car manufacturer would recommend, a lot quicker than you would with city driving. But city driving is for sure a lot uh, harder on your motor in general. Whenever I do my oil changes, I normally use car ramps. Actually, I always use car ramps. It's so much easier that way as opposed to using a hydraulic jack, any type of jack with jack stands. It, it's, if you're doing an oil change, it's needless, especially if um, you're kind of, uh, you don't do a lot of your car work, but an oil change is something that you want to do because, you know, it'll definitely be a lot cheaper than going either to either, either to the dealership or to uh, any type of maintenance facility, any type of garage. And the reason why you probably, um, if you're like a novice, uh, you probably wouldn't want to use hydraulic jack is because you, there are tendencies of uh, people using the hydraulic jack and placing them in the wrong spot of their car and doing damage to the chassis itself or components of the chassis. So it's much easier to use a car ramp. Uh, car ramps are very safe. This one goes up to... Let's focus here. This ramp, these are Rhino ramps. This goes to uh, up to 12,000 pounds, suitable for vehicles up to 12,000 pounds. Um, like this, my car, I believe I have the EXL, so because of the added accessories, I believe it weighs up to around 3,300, maybe 3,400 pounds. But a mid size, a normal mid size car goes anywhere from 3,000 to 3,500 pounds. Whereas the compact car, like a Civic or a Corolla, will go anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 pounds. Um, any larger car, like a minivan, will go probably up to 3,500 to uh, 4,000. A pickup, like a F-150, uh, 1500, or uh, 
iPhone 50 or a Ram 1500 will go between 4,000 to 4,500 pounds. And anything above there, like a F250, a F350, kind of line, stuff like that, can exceed all, all the way up to um, anywhere from like 5,500 all the way up to like 7,000 pounds. So depending on, you know, the bigger your work truck is. So these um, Rhino ramps are more than suitable for um, any type of oil change, for any type of compact, mid-size, or... Um, pretty much any car. Um, so the Rhino ramps, I believe when I bought them, what was it like? It was a while back, it had to be like seven years ago. I bought them at AutoZone for, um, I believe they were on sale at that point. I bought them for around 35 bucks. And so I don't think they should have went farther up than that at this one. This should be this should be around there, maybe like 45, 45 around there at this one. But these Rhino ramps really, Held for me and worked for me really good and they make an oil change it'll so much quicker you just drive up you line up the tire uh, the ramp to the tire and then put it in drive and you drive up to here and this little stop here let me see if you can focus on there there's a little stop right there right where the tire meets and that'll tell you exactly when up uh, when to stop the vehicle and usually it bumps into this and it rolls back a bit. You hit the brake and then you put it in park and you're done. And so it also has a little, kind of like a small tab up here that prevents the car from rolling too. It's safe. You could put chalk uh, blocks on the back of your tire. I didn't today. I just normally don't do it, but added safety is always better. Either some uh, indented rocks to go underneath and act like a chalk block itself or just use some ch uh, pl uh, plastic chalk blocks that are like $15 at your local uh, car store. Quick tip before you drain, take the drain plug to take the oil out. Loosen the oil cap. Right, let me get to that in a sec. Loosen the drain plug and then the oil cap mine is really good. Just loosen it a little bit. You don't have to take it off, you just loosen it so that way when it doesn't create a vacuum and when you take up the uh, drain plug. And how you saw it took me, uh, gave me a little bit of problems when I take it off initially. This way it doesn't get twice as bad or three times as bad when you take out the drain plug and you literally have to like use various tools just to get this loose. So uh, make it easier on yourself and just loosen that up before you get to the drain plug. Alright, so here I am underneath my car. Cover for the my shop light just came off. Sorry about that. The cover for my shop light had uh had come loose. So like I said before, so here I am at underneath my car. This is the oil filter you're gonna want to replace. And the drain plug is let me just get that camera fixed a bit. There's the oil filter and the drain plug is right underneath it. Um Here's a slash cover. No need to take the slash cover off. Uh, you have more than enough room to get everything how you want uh, to take out your oil the way you want to do it without having to take out the slash cover. But if you want to, you can. Um, that's all you need. So let me go ahead and loosen. I'm gonna first take off the oil filter. Let me just loosen that up. Before I do that, let me move over a bit. Get my catch pin. Put that right underneath the filter. Looks like my light. There we go. Everything should just be uh, hand tight, so this I should be able to loosen this up in my hand. Hold on. Wow, that's actually on there pretty tight. Give me one second. So in order to finish, in order to take off the oil filter, I had to grab me some extra tools. Of course, for safety, you had to uh, wear your work gloves. I obviously forgot them. Don't know why. It's going to be hot under there whenever you take off the oil filter or if you touch any part underneath the car that's touching the motor. Basically, any part underneath the car is going to be warm that's uh, tied to the car. And these are oil filter wrenches. This one is gonna be for 
This is the size they're going to use for our car. It's a smaller one. Uh, they have, uh, they go by inches. I just forgot the increment for this one. Basically, this works for all cars like Civics, Toyotas, Accords, Camrys, um, Chevy Prisms, every type of smaller car. This one can go anywhere from your compact to your larger cars, even pickups. I believe I bought this when I was working on my uh, uncle's Econo line. That's why we use this. Can't remember correctly, but this is definitely the one that we're uh, going to be using for today. And we're going to put these on here. Little trick that I do to pretty much save my work gloves is I put some plastic gloves underneath and then I'll put the work gloves over it. Just so when I've, um, just put the camera down. Just so that when I'm doing, um, taking off the oil filter or the drain plug, what have you, I don't end up ruining my work gloves by getting them completely soaked in oil. So I pretty much take off the work gloves when I'm taking off either the oil filter, when I'm completely taking them off, or completely taking off the drain plug. These are, and then once I want to get them off completely, I take off my work gloves, and I just have the plastic gloves on, and then I take those off. You want to have plastic gloves, anything protecting your hands, up to hopefully your sleeves, because uh, used motor oil is it's very carcinogenic, meaning it causes cancer. So you always want to protect yourself. So let's go ahead and try to loosen this up. One last time by hand, and if not, then we just use that oil filter wrench. Okay, it's not working. So now let me just go ahead and try to do the oil filter wrench again. So this oil filter wrench is uh, it has joints here so that way it's flexible. So let's go ahead and use that to loosen up the oil filter. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm using my cell phone so it's camera quality is that it's not that well. Oh it's hitting this right there. Move it over here. There we go. That loosened up. I think from there should be good news. Yeah there. So now it's hitting me. Hopefully you guys saw that. I'll just put this down one last time, put on my take off my shot gloves. I need my work gloves. And at this point, I'm going to fix this underneath. I'm just going to use my plastic gloves. And just start loosening right here. Oil will start to leak. So we just want to go slow. Wait till that oil stops. Seems like the, the leak slowed up, so let's go ahead take this off completely. A little bit more is going to leak again once this comes off completely. Next is going to be that drain plug right there, and then we'll go ahead and do that. I just want to go over the oil filter. There's a little rubber gasket that goes around it. Now, if you aren't, if you bought a used car and you weren't uh, doing your maintenance regularly for your oil changes, then and let's say you bought a used car and you weren't sure exactly how often they did the oil changes. This, um, or you're just not familiar with the car that you have, this might get stuck to the oil, or the oil filter attaches to the 
engine block right there on the sides. So every time you change this oil, every time you change your oil filter, always make sure that there's a gasket that comes off with the oil filter. Because if that gets stuck on there, if that gets stuck there, and you put on the new filter without knowing, um, there's going to be space there. And oil will leak. When you turn your car, oil is going to go everywhere. And you might end up also damaging your motor. So, helpful tint, very important. Always uh, make sure that this gasket comes off with your oil filter. Now for the drain plug, it's going to be a 17 millimeter, uh, either socket or wrench. I lent out my wrenches, my gear wrenches, so I'm just going to use this socket, half inch uh, drive socket, and just to break that. I, I also lent out my hammer, so this gets stuck, which it shouldn't. Um, but if it does, I just go ahead and uh, use my oil to the side of it. The oil pan. Right there. See so I can balance this camera up. So if for whatever reason it gets stuck, you just go right ahead, which it shouldn't, but I'll just show you. Just grab just with the end of your palm. Just give it a quick smack and that'll break it. But this one wouldn't have been stuck. I just wanted to just show you guys a helpful tip. Just in case you guys ever get into that. With a hammer, when you're not the end of the hammer, or you can add another like like an extension bar, like a piece of metal piping that'll fit around your wrench. To give you extra leverage if you ever get stuck with a seized up bolt or whatever. So I'm just going to loosen this slowly because oil will leak out of this as well. Out of the drain plug as well. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> not loosening it up slowly. I'm going to loosen it up slowly to catch it first. Because once it goes the oil is going to leak out straight out there. I want to see the stream and then I want to catch. Get the catch man underneath so that way it goes with wherever the oil is going to be flowing. So let me just try and get that. It's gonna leak around there. Let me fix the oil pan. And from there should be good. So I should be good. Hopefully I don't get it on the cell phone, on my cell phone here. What I do is I when I'm taking it out, I also put So there the oil's uh, coming out, there's a drain plug and the washer. Whenever I take off my drain plug, I, I loosen it out slowly and then before it, uh, I start feeling uh, it starts draining out a bit, the oil, I know I'm getting close to the end of, end of the threads. So I loosen it up a little bit more and once I feel the pressure is going to pop out, I push it against, I hold it against the threads inside I, and push it towards the drain uh, pan, uh, yeah, towards the bottom of the drain pan. And I hold it there and I, and I loosen it as well a little bit more. And then from there, once I know it's completely loose, when I can wobble it around freely, I go ahead and then I take it off. And that's so this way when I take it off, the drain plug is still safely in my hands and not in the catch pan. Alright guys, so I'm just waiting for the oil to drain out of my car. I normally give it about 5 minutes, maybe 10 minutes to completely drain out. 10 minutes is way overkill, maybe even 5 minutes might be overkill, but I wait at least 5 minutes. Now, so this is a drain plug. Actually, let me go ahead and put on... Eh, not fine. So this is a drain plug that comes out with it. So there's usually what this would normally be would be a copper crush washer, but it seems like this is just regular aluminum. But anyway, so it's a crush washer that you would put under in between the drain plug and the catch, well not catch, I'm sorry about the, the drain pan. And so that pretty much makes it so that way it's, it's pretty much air to, uh, leak tight, so that way it does not leak. And so that way this goes against the, uh, catches against the drain pan uh, very well, the drain plug. This is that oil uh, filter wrench that I was talking to you about. This is the bigger one. The smaller one is underneath the car. 
still left it there. I forgot the sizes, but pretty much when you go there, I, I believe there was only two, and it, it broad, it, it's a broad range because it kind of like gets smaller as you go. So they really only have the two sizes there, if I, if I remember right. And so just get the smaller one. It'll work fine for you if you're doing a Honda, especially if you're doing a Honda Accord, a Honda Toyota, Volkswagen, whatever. The bigger one is for bigger cars. Another trick that I do when I do my oil change is kind of overkill. I just, I like to, um, I'm just very, I guess, on point when I do my stuff. Like, I really want it to be done right, especially oil, since that's, like, the bloodline or the blood of your car. You want that to be, uh, um, you know, within, done right and within specs. So what I do is I get an old oil pan, uh, oil jug, 5 quart jug, where it can measure and tell me how much oil is on the side. I mean, it was already inside. So after it finishes leaking into the catch pan, I, uh, I'm pretty much killing two birds with one stone. What I do is I put the oil inside of this, and then what it does is it tells me where the oil was at, how much oil is already inside the car. And on top of that, after I'm done with the oil, I go ahead and I return this to my local gas station, which is literally uh, just a block away from my house, maybe two. And I just go right ahead and drop it off. So always remember to recycle your old oil. And that's just one trick that I do to make sure I put in the right amount of oil back into my car. So I'm just waiting for the oil to drain right now. Let me see if there's anything else to go over. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And pretty much from here, all I'm going to be doing is reattaching this drain plug. Very simple. Want to get it? Uh, once you get it snug, just give it. I wouldn't even say a quarter of a turn, I'd say one eighth of a turn to make it tight. And with the oil filter, a very important thing to do. Um, you're going to put a little bit of oil around the sides. And what I do, it's kind of overkill because people say that the oil pump is going to put oil throughout the whole car anyway. But just to eliminate the fact there of a dry start, I put oil inside of this uh, oil filter. And um, I let that sit. Once I put the oil in there, I put, let it sit for about a minute. And then I put some oil inside of it again a little bit afterwards because it will, it will settle a bit. And then you put it inside. This is the washer. This has nothing to do with the oil filter. This is just the washer for the drain plug. And then from there, I uh, tighten it up with my hands. I make it snug. And then I give it a quarter of a turn. And then it's done. Uh, I don't want to go any uh, tighter than that with the oil filter. And... Um, from there, I will go right ahead and put in measure again, putting the old oil into the uh, five core jug here. Measure how much is there compared to, uh, so that way I can compare it to my bottles that are in here. And that way, when I fill it up, I fill it up correctly. And just remember, you're not going to get all the oil out of your um, car, regardless how long you let it sit to let the oil seep out. Um, two reasons, of course, I'm on our ramps. So it's kind of at an angle. I believe the engine block was a little bit like that. So there's always going to be a little bit like that inside of it. And also there's going to be oil around the bearings and inside the inner components of your motor. There's going to be some trap inside of there. So I think in total, like it recommends an oil filter and uh, oil change uh, with, the, with the change of the oil filter and leaking out the oil that's in the pan. They say it's like 4.4 quarts, but in reality, I think the whole car takes like five quarts. So there's always like at least half uh half a quart left inside the motor so you're always going to have old oil inside there um after that after that i'm pretty much going to do this all video because it's really straightforward it's simple to do you just pretty much do what i showed you backwards i'll show you how to turn off the uh, uh the uh, maintenance light inside the car and then from there you're, you're pretty much done with an oil change so far i'm in it at 10 minutes mainly because i was fussing around with the um First with the gloves and then with the trying to get around with the camera and trying to position it right. And so that's, you know, that's killed a lot of time off. Normally I can do an oil change within, uh, with my cars, the ones that I'm really familiar with, maybe five, ten minutes. If you're doing this for the first time, expect it to take longer, 30 minutes. There will be some error or there will be a learning curve. And then as you, you know, start doing it more often, you'll be able to find that it's so much easier. And then, you know, by your third oil change, you'll, you'll realize it's, it's cake. Why would you want to pay any type of garage or dealership um, 
forty dollars over, at least forty or sixty dollars over the cost, over the cost of the parts for labor. I mean, it's it's kind of nonsense. Um, and pretty much with all cars, it's this simple: Toyota, Volkswagen, uh, Hondas, American cars, any type of foreign cars, pickups, every everything. It's this simple, and anybody can do it. And one last tip, whenever you're doing any type of work around your oil or any type of work around your car, you want to use something that's low lint. Alright guys, not sure you can see in there, but I put oil inside of the oil filter. And so I put that about a minute ago, and if you can see now, I mean when I fill it up, it was up to the top, now it's empty. It looks empty, so it's not empty, it's actually went around to the carpet drivers, and it's in the, inside of the paper. And so we soaked it up, and so that's why I always fill it up twice, just wanted to show you guys that.